Welcome back to Down in the Frame. Today we're going to be going over how to install probably one of the coolest things I've seen in the home industry. This is Aquar's hose hydrant. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's actually a stainless steel water spigot that does not require any sort of ball valve to turn on and off and it's frost proof and uh, has a nice quick disconnect thing for the hose so instead of sitting there for a minute while you unscrew your ball valve or globe valve you have this quick disconnect it's actually pretty nice for people that might be older or have some sort of wrist injury uh, it's really cool so the reason why I'm doing this today is because my mother has some planters back here on the back patio the only hose is on the other side of the house so what we're gonna do is add one right here I've already taken the liberty to do some measurements uh, we're gonna put it right here and I'll show you inside exactly how we're gonna connect to it but before we do that without further ado let's get down to the frame hello ladies shadow all right down here in the basement with the cats so I had actually done a previous repair on this copper line which is the main copper line that comes into the house that line had two of the it's a weird connection it's like a twist valve that just crimps into the copper punctures a hole and lets you have another water line out to like a fridge so i had to get rid of that because it was leaking and i installed these shark bites with pex so i think what i'm going to do is remove this shark bite and run a line out that way and the 26 inch mark that i took and marked is right in the center here where we can run the pipe so it's gonna be a straight shot pretty much might have to get in the way of that drain pipe a little bit but we should be able to make it work just got to get to home depot and get some parts the first part is that t right here some pecs and then i need to show you guys the part that i need for the spigot which is a threaded connection to um, a shark bite connection this is going to be the quickest way to get us some water out there and it's going to be pretty reliable so let's get to it okay i just want to show everybody what's in the box it comes with the cover here which we'll install on the last part of the install it comes with a template it comes with your instructions and and here is the device itself so this is going to be the face of it it's going to mount to the wall just like this and that stem is going to go all the way inside the part that we need is a threaded connection right here that's going to convert this from threads to a shark bite fitting that looks like a three-quarter connector and that's all stainless steel so we're really just going to need an inch and a half hole slide this through the wall screw that in they even include the stainless steel screws you're going to need to install this so and then this device is what you hook up to your hose and you will stick into the hose hydrant twist it and it turns on your water all right, back from Home Depot, what I'm gonna do is remove this insulation, get that out of the way. They took most of it out anyway, it's not really doing anything. And then I'm gonna install the hydrant itself and make sure that's good to go. Run the PEX as close to here as I can and get it ready. Then I'm gonna have to shut off the water to the house and tee into this line. Not only was that not doing anything, it was mostly just a rat highway, so it's a little gross. In this installation, I'm going to go through the rim joist of the house here. It's going to be the easiest to get to as well as it's really the only access I have. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be to the left side of this joist bay here, and that's because I have access to it. And there's all this stuff in the way to run the pipe, so I want to jump to this side and come through there. I'm gonna just measure, the hole's gonna be an inch and a half hole. So I'm going to run a pretty long drill bit outside, poke it through the siding and then go outside and drill a hole in. So right now what I'm doing is getting rid of these, I guess they're floor nails. I'm just cleaning them up a little bit so that I don't stab myself. I'm taking my linesman's, just crimping it and then I'm grabbing it and just metal fatiguing it to break off. It doesn't have to be flush, but just don't want the super pointy ends in the way of me working.
I don't know if you guys can see it, but marked a dot two inches, two inches to the right of this floor joist here. And I'm gonna drill my pilot hole there. Brand new pilot bit here. All right, let's go outside and see if we can see the pilot bit. All right, there we go. That is almost perfect. That is like dead center of the, uh, hold on, so, Daisy, you get, yeah, can I have a minute? Thank you. That is like dead center of the step here on the siding, so get away from that, Daisy. She knows away. She knows away from that. So perfect. We're gonna pull that out and then I'll bring the drill up here. We'll do an inch and a half hole. We can even use a template. a nice slug right there all right so I don't know if you guys can see in there but you should see a hole going down to the basement next I'm gonna make some plumb lines so that we know where to put the screws and I'll mark those and then one more thing before we put this install it in there okay so what we have to do is put a threaded connector into that or threaded coupling and that's gonna transition from a threaded connection to a shark bite connection. So the coupling that I got, or the adapter, is a three quarter to half inch MNPT shark bite connector. As you can see, it threads right in perfectly. And what I'll do is put a little bit of this real tough PTFE paste thread sealant on it. And that should be enough to keep this thing leak proof and we'll tighten it with some channel locks. You don't want to use too much of this stuff so that it gets into the, the fitting when you connect it, but just enough to seal it. Okay, the next step is putting the face cover, which actually goes behind goes behind this metal lip here. It has a gasket on it to prevent any sort of water getting behind this part of the spigot. So we're gonna put that together like that. Slide it into there. Use the screws they provided. The spigot is installed. Now, it might look like the spigot is installed too far to the top, but this spigot's actually angled a little bit, so it points up, and that's for drainage purposes. Um, it might be a little off on my installation, but for the most part, it's simply just because it's angled up. That's why they have you do an inch and a half hole, which is a bit larger than you need. So now what we gotta do is bring that plumbing over this way, and connect into this T right here. So once we get that all sorted out, we'll have water. I'm gonna try to do as much of this as I possibly can before I shut the water off to the house. So let's get going. We're gonna be using these three quarter pipe clamps. They're just nailing little clamps and that's gonna help support our pipe and make sure it doesn't uh, sag and cause issues. I'm gonna try to keep them consistent and measure like an inch up from the floor joist. We'll do two inches. Thank you. 
The other thing I have to do is spray foam that hole, which I'll go do right now. I just have some gaps and cracks, one inch foam. Make sure you shake this stuff up pretty good. And then we'll seal that hole up there by the water spigot. Now that's nice and spray foamed. So we should be able to continue on with the job. I did one support here. It's a little bit above my line. As you can see, pipe kind of tilts back down. So that's fine, we'll do that. All right, so the next part of this is to install this water shutoff valve. It is a three quarter shark bite fitting on both sides. And we're gonna install this facing down so that when we turn this on, it doesn't hit anything and it's not going up in the insulation. This is gonna be facing down. We're gonna put that just after that connection point, that secure point right there. We're gonna put this right after. I'm gonna use one of these pipe cutters and cut this back to like right here. All right, that's our water shut off right there. So I simply just put a screw right in here and a screw above as well. And that's running all the way to there. So we're gonna keep that off for now. And then we'll take out this piece of PEX, put our T in right there, and we'll just bring it right up into there. So there's already some shark bite fittings up there. And the way that you get those off is you can fight with it for a while with like, I don't know, channel locks or scrap piece of metal or something like that. But SharkBite actually sells disconnectors. This one's for a three quarter connection. So you have to buy, you know, obviously separate tools for three quarter and half inch, which is a pain, but that's fine. They're only like 10 bucks, which actually kind of is a lot, but. So it looks like this. And that's gonna allow me to get in there and remove the PEX fittings that are already on there in order to change that PEX fitting out with a three quarter T. I can't promise that it's not gonna be a fight because I feel like it's still gonna be a fight, but we can try it. I feel like having my light on is better than having that light on distracting the camera. I should probably get a bucket. Let's get a bucket. So the way this tool works, All right, so the way that this tool works is it goes around the body here of the coupling or connector or whatever it is, and then it goes on the face of that plastic ring, which is kind of hard to see. It goes on the face of that plastic ring and you can squeeze it, which is probably already compressed right now, but it will compress that plastic ring. That way it opens up the clamps inside and allows you to remove the connector. I got a bucket set up and we're gonna open this up and drain, drain the water out. If I can get this out, because this is this is quite the I remember this was being quite a pain in the butt to take out. I might have to cut this. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that. We have plenty of packs left, so I might as well cut it, drain the water, and then put a new piece in. Decent amount of water left in here. This is the lowest point in the house, so it's pretty much every <clears throat> all the water from every fixture. <clears throat> well, it doesn't make it that much easier.
Here we go. Okay, we're gonna put this one on. First. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now that I have that connection disconnected, I'm gonna hook it up to this connection. I might get in the camera's way here in a second. Forgive me. All right, that is in there. Now what we need to do is we gotta cut this a little short and get the perfect angle to sink it into this connector. I'm gonna cut it there. That's a little long. Cut like another, cut like another half inch off that to three quarters of an inch. Okay, now try to reconnect the main part here. I marked it. Now we're just gonna cut it right on that line. Oh, another piece of insulation down. Plumbing's the best. Everybody should become a plumber. All right, we're gonna see if this thing leaks at all. So, as you guys can see, we have our three-quarter T that came in, brings it over to our water shutoff, screwed to the floor joist, and then straight out to the back. Now it's time to go see if uh, we got water out back. All right, so you screw a standard hose onto the piece that they provided you. And then, you walk up to it. And you just <coughs> screw it in. You now have water in your backyard. I think it's leaking out of this thing. Alright. <laughs> she doesn't like this. Boom. Happy? Happy. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. We have our aqua hose bib installed. It only took a couple hours to install, and it's going to depend on where your water pipes come in and all that. But 
yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Nice clean setup. It's relatively cheap. It's about 80 bucks to do. My one recommendation is that you go with a normal hose and not one of the scrunchy ones that we use because if you're looking to unhook it, um, if you have a scrunchy hose, it's putting pressure back on it. So there's a little bit more pressure, I believe. Uh, maybe use a normal hose if you have a hard time with gripping the uh, connector to this and disconnecting it. And thank you guys for watching. If this video looked a little bit better than videos in the past, well, it's because I'm shooting on a new camera. So let me know what you guys think of the new camera. And if you guys have any little house tips or tricks or things you want me to install, leave it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe guys. We'll see you next time on Down on the Frame.